You're listening to the Backstage Pass podcast, hosted by Hannah Trigwell and brought to you by Tommen. Hello, Tom Gray. Hello, Hannah. How are you? Hello. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, you know, I'm all right. I'm hot. We did just say we were hot. It is a very hot day. It's an extraordinarily it's hot, day. hot day. It is, and you've been very busy with meetings, as you as you were saying. Yes, I have been very, very busy with many, many meetings. Uh, politicians and groups and humans, all, and journalists. Do you feel talked out about that, or can you... Give us some info. No, no, I can. I'm very happy to talk about it. <laughs> it's kind of, the funny thing is, is that I've also got like two music jobs on at the moment, so it's 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 a bit strange because I'm I'm having to sort of switch left brain, right brain all the time. Let's talk about this campaign because I think because I'm in the UK, I feel like my perception of it is I'm very aware of it mm-hmm. because of everything that I've seen online, but I don't know if everybody else will. So sure. Break it down. Break it down for us. Um, well, it's basically that. I, I, I mean, I should, I should explain. I, I, apart from being in a band called Gomez for many years and writing music for TV and stuff uh, and theatre, I, I'm also a, a director of the PRS, uh, PRS for Music, the the Collection Society in the UK, and I work with writer composer organisations like the Ivers Academy, um, who I work on their policy unit and their songwriting committee, and I represent the Featured Artist Coalition as well as a writer, 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 writer artist, advocate. That's a uh. mouthful. Um, uh, and work a bit with the MU as well. So I'm very across everything. It, you, know, I, 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 you know, I wouldn't say I'm an authority on these things, but I certainly feel like I'm very wise to trends that are happening in, in remuneration and uh, how basically we're all getting paid and what that looks like. Um, yeah. And so I was kind of, I'm sitting there at the beginning of COVID going, good God, this is this is going to have a shocking effect because obviously if you lose live income and that keeps going and we don't even know when that'll ever come back and mm. and you lose licensing income because all the bars and restaurants and hairdressers are closed and advertising revenue will go down because the economy's going to go down. Um, yeah. That, you know, PROs like PRS are going to get a massive drop in their income, and that's so everyone's PRS checks or gamer checks or SASM checks or wherever you are in the world, those checks are going to go down. And, um, and it's going to... The, the, the innate inequity, the sort of the horrific way that streaming pays is going to be laid absolutely bare and it's going to, and people are going to get progressively more angry about it. So I need to get in front of that and start talking about it now and giving people the facts as best I can to try and educate people about how the deals are done, where their rights lie and how they've basically been stiffed and are continuing Mm -hmm. to be stiffed. Um, so that people have got somewhere to direct that 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 frustration, um, you know. Yeah. That's that was basically the shape of it, and that's that's how it's progressed, and it's sort of you know gotten an awful lot of traction. There's a lot of UK MPs have have spoken about it, asked questions in Parliament. Um, um, uh, everyone from the BPI, which is the major labels, have had to respond to it. Um, Bjorn from ABBA spoke about it in the press. Wow! Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it's a it's a curious thing that that you can just start talking and people listen. I've I've worked for several years in the background in these organisations, not taking a lead on anything. So it's been curious becoming the sort of not you know the sort of head of it, the sort of spit, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's also not the, I'm, I'm, I'm a classic side man in the band I'm in as well. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that guy. Right. So, um, how did, how did it go from, I mean, uh, there must've been so many steps, you know, from going, from being in a band to the, the position you're in now, sort of, as you say, heading up the broken record 
campaign? I mean, it, it probably predates it, really. I started off um, studying politics and being very engaged uh, in, right. in politics as a kid. So I came through sort of Labour Party politics in the UK in the early 90s. Uh, and then I was about to go and work. I had an internship to work in Washington. Uh, I forget what year that would have been. 1996, 97, something like that. So I was going to go and work for a senator and be a speechwriter. That was my thing. I wanted to be a speechwriter. Wow. That's what I've always, right. I've always loved words. I, I love writing and I wanted to do a speechwriter. I thought that's, that's a great thing. I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the lads who I'd grown up with, who we'd like recorded, we were self-recordists, hobbyist recordists who would make C90 Fostex four track tapes of our music we wrote when we were stoned. Um, Suddenly, suddenly got offered like twenty-five record deals, at, wow. and you know, got to the point where Madonna was trying to fly us over to Los Angeles in a private jet. And oh my god! Wow. <laughs> from this little C ninety cassette, and then my life went on a completely different journey. We won the Mercury Prize with most of what was on that C ninety cassette, and. Uh, and then in, probably in the early noughties, we kind of became a serious touring band in the United States. And I toured probably nonstop in America from about 2002 to 2011. Yeah, they say that when you tour America, you have to really be there for a long time. Is that Oh, yeah, true? no, 100%. If you, want, <laughs> if you want to crack it, if you want to be like... I mean, at one point we were in like the top, 30 grossing bands in America because we were just playing every day. I think one year we played 240 shows in a year. So it was a life lived. And eventually about 2012, yeah. when, the record, when the record industry was absolutely on its knees and it all just felt like, what's the point? Just decided to hang my touring boots up for a while. And because uh, it was just like, ugh, like... I've got to get off the party bus at some point, you know. Touring's so intense, isn't it? It's like a world of its own. Absolutely. I sort of got into composing for TV, did like a big children's TV show, got involved with theatre people, just started investigating what else I could do. Because I love songwriting, you know. Songwriting's really my thing, is my craft. You know, that's, if yeah. someone's asked me what I was, I'd say I was a songwriter. Um, yeah. Never really enjoyed performing live uh, enormously. It, I'm, 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 I get quite a lot of stage fright and I've always had to sort of overcome that. Uh, yeah, I'm exactly the same as that. Yeah. Definitely feel more comfortable in a studio. It's really, it is good fun touring and I love playing shows, but it's almost like you can't be honest about the fact that sometimes it's really hard and you 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 know you're up there being you uh, the you that people see and the musician side of you but then there's the the stage nerves and the and you know actually where I'm honest with myself and where I'm most comfortable is in the studio but that's that's not a very sexy thing to say <laughs> I I don't know. I I think it's a really sexy thing to say. I think you know. I think I think that that actually the the creative side of it is why I want to be involved in it. I don't want yeah. to be involved. Stage performance is about refining something so that it's it gets more and more perfect. But the problem with it is, and this is yeah, that's true. this is what they don't tell you. And at one point, we got so good that like actually we felt like we'd gone out like down the other side we'd like become we'd gone past the moment when we were best because we'd oh. become so rehearsed and so like not even rehearsed from actually actu just like we could smash it every single time and like it's just like and it was great because you know hordes of people would show up to see us it, all yeah. in every city in America but but it, it's also curious because you kind of feel like you're on autopilot and it's not, yeah, it's not the thing that, I, the thrill of, of having a brilliant idea and realising it and having a vision 
that's that's music to me. Having to sort of turn on the charm and the energy every night <laughs> is is bru- yeah. is brutal, as you know. You know, it's it's mm. sometimes you just want to be a miserable cat and. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. <laughs> Do you get that feeling from, you know, the feeling of um, realizing your vision? Do you have you have you had that through this broken record campaign? Do you get a similar feeling like that? Uh, yeah, it's a similar sort of a thing because yeah, you can sort of see where the pieces are sitting. You you have to think, and it's. In many ways, yeah, I think I've got, I'm very much like a producer kind of brain. I, I really like strategies and I really like yeah. um, kind of pulling focus and being able to see the big picture, you know, and, and, and addressing that. And yeah, I think campaigning, especially in the position I'm in where it's all me, is very like that because I can just... Mm-hmm. If I have a sort of really a, a creative idea about people I can involve, or um, you know, or sort of places where the, I, I might be able to sort of apply pressure, especially in a sort of, I mean, this is political brain as well, but sort of in a, <laughs> not to be too Machiavellian about it, but 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 <laughs> but, but, but but you know that I do like sort of being able to sort of think about things asymmetrically and go, well, how can you, how can you get this to happen by, how can you press down over here and this pops up? You know, I think that's really kind of, you know, if you know what I'm talking about, it's that's, there's something really creative about it. I also have to write a lot of copy as well for this. So um, it allows me to, you know, wax lyrical which, yeah. which is the same, you know, it's the same thing. Um, and, and, I'm a, and I'm a people person, you know, I love meeting people and, and getting to know them. And that's, you know, that, that's probably served me better than anything else in my career, if I'm honest, I, I, which is the bit they never really sort of tell, to, tell you, is that actually, if you're going to succeed in this business, it's going to be the relationships you form and the champions you find, and and yeah. and that's it, really. Yeah, they don't they don't say that, do they? They're just like write the hit song. <laughs> yeah, but that, I mean, that, I suppose I, I I come from a very different headspace. I I really didn't I didn't come from that kind of commercial songwriting thing. Okay. It was very much like do whatever the hell you like. My band were just right. ridiculous still are ridiculous and <laughs> um, we just did what we wanted for people that aren't aware of the band how would you describe them as? god like a car crash like a like <laughs> like we, we were sort of i guess we're the sort of last band to really go to stick two fingers up at genre and go nah People don't need, I mean, the problem is, is right, everyone gets so professionalized by this industry. And I think that's really yeah. a massive shame because, mm. you know, the reason why genre is really there is because it helps you find an audience, which means it helps you sell something. And as soon as that thought enters your mind, you've almost lost on some level because because what you, 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 yeah. you, obviously, you obviously want to make music like, I love the thing that thrills me the most is making music purely out of that compulsion to make it yeah. and just discover what happens. And But whenever I think about the audience, it, it's never better. It's never, it curiously never improves anything that I do. It makes it more difficult, if anything, doesn't it? Yeah, you'll just get in your own way. Uh, mm. And cause, because... The last thing the artist needs is a naysayer, right? You, you should just, you really, people just need to freely express themselves and, mm. and hopefully there'll be some, something great will come out of it, you know. The great thing is you can just, yeah. you can just throw it away anyway, right? It's... <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so... You can't always just throw it away at the end of the day and think, well, that's... Someone said... Um... 
It was actually originally something that Ed Sheeran had said about turning the tap on and letting the dirty water come through, and then at some point the clean comes, and it's this that kind of thing, isn't it? I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 just letting it happen, and not not um, yeah, not getting in your own way, mm. and and steering clear of other people who get in your way as well. Um, yeah, that's that's a that's a big thing too. Is is not listening to. Um, too many voices because it just doesn't help it's yeah you know you, you, the world doesn't need somebody who's listened to everybody else <laughs> they don't need that that's true they just want something else are you able to write songs you know while you're while you've got a focus on pushing this campaign as well, can you? I, I've got to. So yeah, I am doing. I mean, I've yeah. got I've got two serious deadlines in front of me. So right uh, with theatre projects. So I've just got to like uh, pull your finger out. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah. I don't know if I've ever put it in to be honest, have it? But like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I, uh, I, uh, I've, I've, I, I. Uh, I have to write like in my day. I have to like say like these two hours are going to be me writing a song, and actually tell myself yeah. what song it's going to be as well. And you just think this is the kind of song, it's going to be this, and I'm going to write it between these two hours. Go. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Do, do you not? Do you find? I mean, sometimes does it just not work out? I imagine. Yeah, of course. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but like yeah. I think I think. A lot of writers, what you really need is a strategy and a, a, and 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 like to give yourself a brief. Yeah. Because that, you know, and 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 that that brief shouldn't be like I say. It shouldn't be like I write a hit because that is not a brief. That is not yeah. that is not a brief. <laughs> it's the world's biggest brief. Exactly. Exactly. It, it's like what is good about like or what is great about me in this moment right what is what is what is what if what would I say is thrilling me right now about myself like the bit that I can see that I gets me excited what's that and then sort of design around it and kind of go okay what story do I want to tell with that and then that's usually how I do it because it's just like I get an idea in my head of something that excites me and then I just want to arrive there so I have to do the work in between to get from here to there yeah I've always really really wanted to be original so it's I almost don't care what it is as long as I don't feel like I've heard it before that's kind of that's yeah that's always like the thing that excites me the most because it's like you know you steal from everywhere of course but like it's that it's how ha- <laughs> it's how you can found that so that yeah. so that it it, it's like, what is that? What is this humunculus I've created? This this little monster, you know. That's 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 really when it's thoroughly joyful for me. Mm. How do you approach it? How do you approach songwriting? It, it, it either goes one of two ways. Either I've got a day set aside where I'm like, that's going to be a songwriting day. Do you know what I mean? Or it's like planned in like a co-writing session with someone. Um, but it's but it's usually a whole day, so there's not really. I don't ever have much pressure time wise to write. I, I've not. I don't think I've ever been in that situation actually. And I'm interested to see how I would do in something like that if it would make me write something amazing or something absolutely terrible. Um, but yeah, it's either usually like I'm gonna write something on that day might take ideas from like a voice notes thing on my phone or something I've written down or to be to be fair like nine times out of ten it's just something brand new and it's whatever I'm feeling on that day or I'm just trying to chill out playing myself some something that I don't know what it is like you know it's just happening sort of thing yeah and I'm just playing guitar for the fun of it and then I, and then something comes naturally and then I'm like, oh, I should write that down. This is a song. <laughs> I've, I've never been very structured, like very 
I've never really guided myself in in what I should do or what what I wanted to do particularly apart from just whatever the mood was on the day but um I've written to brief sometimes and that's been fun but not as fun yeah as just doing whatever's natural but I think that's just that's just life in general isn't but did it? you write the brief no. This is no. now. This is the point I'm making. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying jump to somebody like like. Don't do somebody else's brief. Write your own brief. I, write your own brief. Write your own brief. It's 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 not structure. What it is is um, limitation. Right. It. I think. I think it. You know. I, I'm a great believer in limitations, and that okay. and that you, you are most creative. When you are, it's like the bigger the sandbox gets, the the more choices you have. So the less you'll, you, the, the less you'll do. Yeah, I, I find that actually in everything. That's that's really true. So like a narrowing of focus. Yeah, choice cho- yeah. choice is actually um, an illusion. It's 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 not healthy. You know, it's like it's it's. We, you know, yes, for on like a like a glow. It's important that we're free. You know, <laughs> that's important, yeah. obviously. But but this this <laughs> idea that that freedom um, is is the is is the cause of, of of great things happening isn't 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 doesn't follow at all. In fact, yeah. in fact, it for me it's like you know some of the most you know the thing that made me have success was 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 learning how to record on a four track machine you know and like having to do these incredible like mathematical charts me and Ian used to do when we were kids like working out how we bounce everything and keep everything so we'd record a whole band on to four tracks and then split it and then you know and wow. you know and stuff like that and like you know, whereas now, obviously, you can just keep adding. You can just keep add new track, add new track, add new track, <laughs> yeah. add new track. Two hundred stems. Yeah, on a... leave it to the mixer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, mixers have a hard time now. You know, I know it must be. because it, just... because people should just make decisions. It's like mm. it's like it's the same thing, right? If you say a meeting is an hour and a half long, a meeting will take an hour and a half. If you say a meeting is yeah. tw- if you say a meeting is twenty minutes long, you'll do the exact same amount of work. In the- what's that? Is it principles law or something? Yeah, no, f- so it begins with a P. I forget it? what it's called. Yeah, but it's the same thing. Yeah, but yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. If you're sitting in the studio in your like forty-eight hour co-write, whatever. And you, you've got like, you've written the song and you've done the parts. You're like, you know what? We should just stick another 50 harmonies on that and <laughs> and, and just try and alt. Oh, it's, it's so true. It's like, stop it. Just stop doing it. It's it's yeah. it's either good or it's bad. It, you're not going to make it any better. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, no, I couldn't. I, I, I've tried being, I've tried mixing stuff. And I just get, I just get, I end up getting angry with my friends. I'm just like, I'm sorry, this is just nonsense. <laughs> you've not made any, de- you've not made any decisions. There are really huge benefits in in saying to yourself, I can't, I'm not going to record more than five tracks. I'm not going to, you know, it it has to happen in a melody and a single harmony. It has to be like one mm. instrument and a beat. It what I want to write this kind of a song. And I and I want it to have you know have this kind of a feeling go, yeah. You know, because yeah, that, that's 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 it. You know. I remember the first time I I was playing on just a, I opened a logic project and I, I mean, my God, I was layering tiny little percussive things on top of each other, thinking, oh, that, that's cool because that sounds different, <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then add in this and put in the tiny bit of that in there, but does that does does it really add anything? But the the paranoia that taking it out would ruin the song just it just gets crazy, doesn't it? Yeah, it it just yeah you just have to it, stop that mode of thinking. I think mm. it's it's so funny now, especially when you listen to what most pop look sounds like, and there's just nothing happening. And you're like, yeah. and you're like, wait a minute. How, I mean, 
<laughs> How is it that people are getting delivering 200 tracks of audio to mixes and then you hear the single and it's like a synth, a bass and a vocal and you're like, how, what, Did am I missing yeah. something? I, my mixing engineer for my, for the first album that I did, I remember being in the mixing session with him and he's so, he just, he he's really great and he knows what's essential and what's not. And he was just deleting things left, right and centre. And I was like, mm, uh, what? <laughs> what? And he's, what? he's like, well, it doesn't add anything. So we take it out, listen to it now. Do you miss it? No. Good. Carry on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm just saying is that you could, you'd be surprised how much you can achieve in two hours if you aren't like trying to ice the cake. Do you do production as well? I've always done production, but but I just yeah. I just think it's the same thing. Starting off as a self recordist, yeah, it was about the outcome. It was like how come you know how how can you record a song that sounds like weird and wonky? You know what? Let's let's record a weird and wonky song. You know, um, which is you know we did a lot of really. Um, yeah, you know so that, that's. But yeah, so I am, yeah. I, I, and of course, with the like TV music, that's that's all production, really, because it's 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 all textural, you know, nowadays, you know, if it's not like strings and stuff, if it's, you know, synth beds and and uh, stuff that needs to get out of the way of dialogue and, you know, yeah. that whole mode of thinking. But yeah. How did you get into the other side of it? you know, now being a, a director for PRS? I suppose about three years ago, I was chatting to some mates and I, I, you know, it occurred to me many times that there can't be many people who have a full, who, who, uh, who have had a long career in the music business and have sort of a lot of connections in the world of politics. And um, I just kind of went, oh, Am I going to... It's going to be me. It's going to be me. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. <laughs> Somebody's got to take one for the team. May as well be this asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's kind of how it happened. Uh, really? Really. <laughs> Brilliant. And, you know, lots of... Because people had pushed me to for ages and had said, you know, you should really do this, man. And I was like, all right. Because, you know, I'm opinionated and I'm thoughtful, hopefully. And, yeah, I think I, I've, I've got a strong voice when I'm in those rooms and I'm not intimidated by, you know, people who work for major labels. Because I've, yeah. I've been dealing with them my whole life. It's just like, same shit, different day. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's fine. It's. I think. I'm, I'm. I think. It. I think it's appropriate that I'm doing it. And he, and more so now with a campaign like this, where I'm really going. Okay, let's call in all of those favors with all of those different people who've just become friends or acquaintances over the years in politics and music, and saying, let's put this all together. Um, and yeah. And 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 and. and Thus far, it, it works. You know, I can get the meetings that I want to get and people, you know, um, want to listen, you know. And, and, and it's been really interesting talking to all kinds of, you know, I've got a meeting with the Shadow Culture Secretary this week. I've got a meeting with the World Economic Forum. Some talks about so speaking to the UN about it, which is bizarre. Um, wow. There's, there's so... Um, and then there's like lots of people behind closed doors who can't say that they support it, but do support it and want. Yeah. There's a lot of that. I wish we probably talk about that. It's a lot of a lot of young artists who, especially, I mean, there's people in the industry too who won't say that they support it, but do. But a lot of young artists who feel that if they speak up about this stuff, they won't get streamed. They like they they won't get you know New Music Friday or whatever it is that that everyone chases after these days. Um, I sound like an old git, don't I? Um, <laughs> and um, and um, 
And, 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 and I'm trying to say to them, don't worry about that cost. They're, they're, these companies are so big, they don't, they don't notice. They don't, they don't care. Half of, them, half of the streaming platforms want things to change. They don't, you know, they just, they're in the deals that they're in. You know. Have you spoken to the streaming, have, have they spoken to you directly? I am in contact with people right. at streaming services, yeah. Um, and some of them... Are... That's good, because I, I wondered whether it was just, you know, whether they were listening. They're very much listening. I mean, I, th- I forget the right. name of the woman who... Uh, there's, a, there's an organisation who represent loads of them, and she made a speech and talked about it. They're very aware. I mean, I'd, I'd be worried if I was them, because, you know, there are going to be... This is going to go on. And, you know, mm. it's not... People might be okay-ish now, but when the government um, in the UK, when the government self-employment allowances and stuff disappear, yeah, and all the live money from people's bank accounts is gone, it's going to get. I mean, we, we, you know, it's going to get desperate, and I don't, mm-hmm. and I don't think people have really mentally prepared themselves for that. Bands or artists now who are putting their songs on these streaming sites. From your point of view, do you think that they should carry on doing that but make noise about the fact that the rave pays very low per stream and that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I'd say is, look, think about the kinds of deals that you do. Don't, don't, don't do life of, don't sign a life of copyright deal. Don't do it. Don't ever do that. <laughs> don't, don't sign a recoupment deal anymore if you believe in your work don't go for the advance try and get the money out of the system by by putting it in and keeping as many of the rights as you possibly can that's what you should be doing right that's just that's the where we're at at a point in history you know um then when it comes to as an independent artist getting your music out there if you've already got fans i mean it's, it's much harder if you're a completely emerging artist but if you've already got fans Think of it like this. It's like hardback, paperback, lending library, right? This is how I always describe it. Hardback is physical sales to your fans. So, and people do buy physical um, still. And so you can make manufacture something, you can sell T-shirts, you can do that. That's the way you're going to make the most money is, is, is D2C selling physical stuff. Yeah. Um, then there's paperback, which is like Bandcamp, which is monetizable digitization so but but what you've got to do is you've got to do this first for a period of time before you go onto the digital platform so you have to you have have to have you have to have that's why the hardback that's why the book companies sell the hardback for a while before they make it a paperback right it's because you've you've what you're not doing is cannibalizing the value by putting it all together so you right. so it has to you know you sell your physical then you go to digitization paid digitization and then mm. at like bank camp or wherever and you tell your fans about it and you get them to buy from you there and it's only after you've had a period of time where you feel like you've got value from your actual fans that's when you let it go to the lending library right which is basically what the streaming platforms are so what you because because right. because yeah. if you let it go straight to the streaming you're gonna have to let some music go to the streaming sites because unbelievably radio stations and things like that won't play a song unless it's on Spotify. So yeah, the single's going to have to go on Spotify. I'm not saying there aren't caveats to this, but once the music is on Spotify, like a whole album or whatever, you if it goes on at the same time as it goes on there, as it goes on Bandcamp and it goes to physical, you're just cannibalizing all of the value in, 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 your, in your actual fans because they'll just go and listen to it for free on Spotify. Right. Yeah. It's just gone. So you have to think like that and you have to think about and as best you can is to think strategically. And if you are working with a label, get them to think more strategically because people don't realize how, you know, especially if a label's got a lot of releases, they just aren't necessarily thinking about it. They'll just kind of stick it out in the wind and hope for the best. Um, especially if they haven't got much of a marketing budget. I think there's a way of approaching it so that it, you you minimize the, the 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 damage to the value of your work um yeah 
but still engage with it. Because I'm not anti-streaming, far from it. I use streaming. Yeah, I yeah. love streaming. Streaming has massively improved our ability to do, you know, music discovery. I, when I was, you know, when I was like 20, I would, I would look for records. It would take me like three years to find a record. I remember in particular, I was trying to get hold of Star Sailor by Tim Buckley, right? And right. right, and that record was the most. It was just like it didn't exist. It was like it was a record that people <laughs> said had come out, but it didn't exist. Yeah. And then fa- finally got a copy, I think, in a Record Collector in Sheffield, and um, and it was like, oh, it's a horrible record. Don't listen to that record. I mean, it, it's it's Tim Tim Buckley when oh, he's it's when Tim Buckley's on maximum heroin and has just lost the plot and it's just like not good. But that's an aside. Now, now I want to hear Star Sailor by Tim Buckley. I just type Star Sailor Tim Buckley into a it's streaming site and it's just yeah. and it's just there instantaneously. Unbelievable! Yeah. What an incredible thing that is. That you know, um, but what we do have to fix is how it pays because yeah. we can't it, it it's just too rubbish and the eu you know the eu just tried to do uh, i have just put out a really important directive on copyright called the eu copyright directive which we fought long and hard to get which has protections in it for um artists to get your record company audited it has it has a revocation of rights protection in it so that you can get your rights back from record companies if they aren't exploiting you. It has, um, uh, what else is in there? It has a right to fair remuneration as well. Now, and it was going to get rid of like safe harbor from YouTube. So YouTube, we're going to have to start properly paying for music, right? Yeah. We fought so hard to get it. And now the UK government aren't doing it. Don't know how it got lost along the way. It's just, it's really crazy, actually. You know, so this is why I'm constantly speaking to creators and just saying, you know, don't think it doesn't matter. Don't think that you can't be heard because, you know, you're a citizen like anyone else. And when you speak to a, a policymaker or a legislator, they have to listen because you're one of their constituents. You're, you're, you know, they have to listen. It's really interesting to, you know, to hear about everything that's happening with Broken Record, because I see it, you know, um, and to be able to just talk to you about it and, and get your unfiltered thoughts about it is just, is great. Um, I'm just sad that we've come to the end of the time. Oh, you know? oh let, look but at thanks us. Thanks so much for speaking to me about this. Oh, it's been really good. No, um, absolute pleasure. What is your track of the week? My track of the week. Um, it's I can't remember the name of it. It's the it's I've been listening to it a bit. It's the it's the first tr- single off the new Blake Mills album. Uh, okay. You'll have to find it because I, ca- I can't because okay. I can't think of it. It's really interesting. Blake Mills's new album's really like. Uh, Blake Mills. Yeah, I really love. I think he's great. A really interesting producer, and he's a, just an amazing guitar player. Um, I think his guitar playing is all over the new Bob Dylan record, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but um, but yeah, his his new his new record's much weirder, and there's sort of touches of sort of um, hard to describe really touches of like maybe um, um, you know uh, this is left brain right brain you see this is what happens <laughs> yeah. this is what happens. <laughs> You know, uh, like Spirit of Eden. Um, what's that band called? Laughing Stock. There's touches of that about it and touches of like um, mid-70s John Martin and stuff. It's good. It's really interesting. Um, sorry, is that a good enough answer? I don't feel like I answered it yeah, in any way absolutely. straightforwardly. Uh, the first track from the new Blake Mills album. Yeah. That's a good enough answer for me. Well, it was the sort of it was the it was the sort of one that was sort of put out as the single. I forget what it was called. I, oh, okay. I haven't really. It, yeah, I've only had it for a week. You know, it's hard to learn the titles yeah. of songs. Isn't I it? don't. I'm not. I don't blame you. I, I, I feel. I feel you. like you're judging me, Hannah. I feel like you're judging me. Songwriting is very important, but whatever. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> <No, I'm just. laughs> 
<laughs> no, I don't. I don't blame you. Um, I'm going to check it out though. First, first, the first track of the new Blake Mills. Just, album. just the whole Blake Mills album. Just listen to that. The whole album. Yeah, the whole thing. It's it's really cool, interesting record. And what is the best lesson that you've learnt in your career so far? Um, Another big question. I, I, I think it's something that I alluded to earlier, which is f- find find your champions. That's that's the trick. The trick is to find your champions. If you find them, hold on to them and be very loyal to them, because people who will go into battle for you and sing your praises, they'll that that that's that's you that's that, that they're the defining people in your career, no question about it. I agree. Good, thank you, Hannah. Have I won your favour back now after my yes. appalling song of the week <laughs> <laughs> answer? No, but the the thing is about the answer is that I'm gonna you know I'm not gonna forget that answer, am I? So I will be checking that song out. And sometimes someone will say to you, check this song out, and you're like, yeah, I'll check it out. But sometimes you don't get around to it. And with this. It's just going to be in my head now. What's it called? Oh, what? What's it? What is it? What? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll find that out. But thanks so much. It's been great to speak to you. Lovely. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself, won't you? You too. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. Be sure to hit subscribe and leave a comment to let us know what you think. And I will see you next time on Backstage Pass. <laughs>